and I ask you, don't kill the messenger, right? Don't shoot the messenger. Hear me out. At least hear me out and and consider some of the things before you have a sort of knee-jerk reaction to what I'm going to tell you. And and the core uh, premise of this video is the the problem or the challenge with BEND. His term everyone's using, benzo-induced neurological dysfunction, um, a.k.a. in other word games. And I do think we're playing a little bit of a word game despite some best intentions here. And not only that, I think there's a lot of risk here, right? So first off, I want to say, do I believe in the idea that benzo, there's such a thing as a benzo-induced neurological dysfunction? Yes, let's put that up front, right? So no need to, to attack me yet with your spears. Just hear me. Yes, okay, but hear me out. Let, let, me, let me dive deeper into this thing. Now, the problem as I see it is if we're going to use a term like bend or a term that I've kind of you know, playfully created as an addition, an extension to this, B-W-I-N-D, B-Wind, um, which would be, you know, if you're looking at BEND as being benzo-induced neurological dysfunction, then what about benzo withdrawal induced neurological dysfunction? Or do we sweep them both under the same umbrella? Because I think there's two different things happening there. We certainly have someone, um, and I just had a client the other day that was like this, where as soon as they got on the benzo, it immediately was causing um, side effects. It was immediately causing um, some weird problems for them. They were having a, or you were, they were having a paradoxical effect. And the doctor said, well, just stay on it. You know, that's your pre-existing anxiety emerging and, you know, just give it a chance. And sometimes people can, this, you know, I've had clients that were on benzos for years and they were, they were, you know, um, share that they were having symptoms like day one, day two. And they, they, the doctor just kept kind of gaslighting him and told him it wasn't that. And, you know, and, and it can be complex where benzos can actually give you, re, you know, relief in a lot of areas, but then have this sort of you know, one or two or a few kind of hooks in you and this pervasive sort of, um, uh, you know, what you call it, a, um, uh, a side effect for, for lack of a better word, right? And again, th- and this is all going to come full circle here because like I say, the problem with Bend is partially we're playing a word, we're playing a game of semantics here. And the question in my mind is, okay, is it necessary for all this redefinition? Um, will it help the cause, Right will help us differentiate things and be able to have a better handle on our recovery and understanding the situation or does it muddy the waters and i tend to believe it 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 more than muddies the water not only that but i also think it creates a false premise in many many people's minds um, this idea that no this isn't which all this is bend you know i have a neurological dysfunction and therefore you know, Dave or any other coach or anybody else, any other therapist, you probably can't help me because I have a benzo brain injury. Like this goes all the way back to the core of my very first video. My, my, my passion of being here in a sense was to tell everyone that, no, you don't have brain damage and you can heal and you can come back from this. Right. And somehow it's like this, this premise has this, premise has found its way back into the narrative it's just cleverly sort of been redefined a bit there's new terminology but it's the same premise essentially that benzos profoundly injured you this is very different and therefore all the variables change so i have clients that come to me and immediately they reach out you know maybe half you know partially an instinct hey i want to see if you can help me they'll say but i already feel like you probably can't because i have bend you know, therefore therapy won't work. And on this is very different. I said, okay, well, let's explore that. And 98% of the time, what they're talking about, Ben, they're talking about benzo symptoms. So let's dive into that deeper. All right, first, again, bend versus B wind. Is, are you talking about a benzo induced neurological dysfunction or a benzo withdrawal induced neuro- neurological dysfunction? I would argue that both of them could have um, their own domains. Now, are we talking about bend? benzo-induced neurological dysfunction versus withdrawal. Well, and how do we know? How do we separate the two? There's so many symptoms of benzo withdrawal. How do you really know one from the other? How do you differentiate that? Uh, and how will you communicate that to your psychiatrist, your, your doctors? And, with, and let me tell you guys, without having, um, you know, peer-reviewed, I mean, a lot of scholarly research, these doctors are not going to listen to new terms. They just won't. I mean, it don't matter, right? Which still many of you will say, hey, but we got to start somewhere. Okay, fair enough. But my argument is 
uh, again, first, you know, as someone with an advanced research degree, we have to define everything. It all starts with our definition. Words matter. And I, and part of my argument and my, my, my problem, so to speak, with Bind uh, in terms like that is that it, it sort of becomes an umbrella term for a bunch of other things that I think is better served, a bunch of other terms that point to real variables of this situation that, that I think, you know, words matter. I think those words are important that we differentiate bend from withdrawal, bend from side effects, bend from manifested conditions, bend from, you know, um, a paradoxical uh, 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 reaction to the drug. Like these are very important. You know, even like the Benzo Information Coalition and, and a lot of the like-minded, they want to change the words. They don't like the word dependence anymore. They say it's confusing. People, you know, they think dependence is addiction. So what, we're going to get rid of that? We're going to, we're just going to call it bend or, or some other term? I say no, dependence, words matter, you know? And we live in the era of now feelings where if things hurt our feelings and it's complicated, then we just change the words. We change the definitions. And I don't, and look, I'm all for it. Language is always evolving and it's, that's how it works. Language will continue to evolve as should it. Uh, but you, again, you have to weigh the pros and cons and ask yourself, is it worth it? Is, is, the, is the, you know, do we gain more than we lose or risk here? And I don't think we do with things like dependence. I say it's not that hard to, to help someone understand the difference between dependence and addiction. And, and we need to share that, right? And so here's how I do it. And I say to anybody, and I've said this a million times at this point, it feels like there's a difference between addiction and dependence. People can become dependent on their benzo, similar to a person that becomes dependent on their heart medication or their anti-seizure meds. But that doesn't mean they're addicted, right? Uh, as these people do not use the drug to get high. You know, people who are addicted use the, their drug to get high. Uh, nor are there any uh, behaviors around uh, the people that are dependent on benzos that are indicative to a typical drug addictive behavior, right? They're not stealing. I've never had a client that stole or committed a crime to get their benzos uh, that were dependent. Now, my clients that were addicted to benzos that took it to get high, oh, they did all kinds of things. They robbed family. They robbed people. They faked symptoms. They, they, some of them even, um, you know, hurt themselves to go to the hospital and try and thoughts of, you know, trying to get the, the, their meds. This is very different. And I think it's easy to just explain it to someone as, you know, there is a difference between dependence and addiction. I'm dependent on this med, you know, no different than SSRI or anything else. Why is that so hard to communicate? And I get it. Well, because well, a lot of people struggle with that. Well, then we, we've got to, we've got work ahead of ourselves. That's what I would say. But I think if you just change the word and get rid of it altogether and create new words, first off, the medical community is going to push back hard because these guys operate by books. Talk about fundament, fundamentality they, or dogma. They operate in research, in scholarly research. They want to see it in a, a thick book with a bunch of references that they can point to in research. And those references better be big studies and they better be peer reviewed. That's how it works. Now, just because that's a process, I'm not saying that we can't evolve our language or there's no room. Sure, we're gonna, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen where it should, uh, where it should happen. But again, is it needed? Is it necessary? In this example, I'm not convinced that it is. And I'm, you know, someone that tries to remain very op, uh, open-minded. So I will be open-minded to bend and other new terms. And to, I'm open-minded to the idea of changing words or adding words or removing words. I am open-minded. But again, as a scientist, as some, a scientific-minded person, um, I'm going to weigh and compare and contrast and think about all these variables first. And I'm not convinced that changing the words is what we need. I think we need education. That's my premise. So again, when we're looking at bend, how do we differentiate it from withdrawal? Many of my clients come to me and say, well, no, it's been, they say, well, what, what's the features? And they start listing things. And I say, my friend, that's a, that's withdrawal. Well, no, 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 this is different. No, that's, that's withdrawal. <laughs> this is a, a hell of a drug. This is, is the worst drug on the planet. I, I don't think there's a drug on the planet that has more symptoms, uh, withdrawal symptoms, right? Cr wild, unbelievable withdrawal symptoms. There's not a drug on the planet that coming off it can manifest so many other problems, so many other conditions that in themselves can have 20, 30, 40, 50 other symptoms, right? There's, there's a connection here. Um, how do we differentiate bend from side effects? 
you know, that's another tough one. Like I said, the drug could be working well for you or even moderately or mildly for you, you know, benzo, but then it's creating this other side effect, POTS, or it's creating some kind of uh, your, your headaches or, or myobolic differences or neurological, you know, whatever. Like, and I, I kind of hesitate because I don't want to trigger anybody. I'm not going to go down all that, uh, down that road, but, you know, but there's side effects with anything. There's side effects, you know that. And how do we differentiate that from bend? How do we, how are we sure that that's not what we're articulating? And that's important. So if you go to your doctor and you say, I have bend, he's going to go, what the hell is that? And you're going to say, you're going to explain it to him. And he's going to say, I don't believe that. Show me a study. You won't be able to most likely. And if you did, it's going to be very early, probably a bias study, you know, uh, bias meaning people that are supporting the cause. Unfortunately, that is considered a bias study. Um, and he's, you just, he's not going to hear you. He, he or she won't hear you. But if you say, I'm having a side effect, they have to listen to that. They understand that. It's almost like cops. You know, you get pulled over by a cop. It's like some, it's like almost like they can't hear you until you speak their language. And then suddenly they react. They're very, I have lack of a better word, very fundamental in that regard. Doctors, medical doctors. They understand side effects. Hmm, side effects. What are you having? Let me see. All right. They can get with that. And I think you'll, you'll get a better reaction out of them. Now, again, how do we differentiate bend from manifested conditions? Now, this is a big one that I've been talking about for years, that, that the acute protracted or the acute severe withdrawal can manifest. I mean, so many things. Rumination alone can cause depression, anxiety, panic, uh, insomnia, health anxiety, OCD, it's, it's, a, it's, it's insane how much stuff can, can manifest during this process. I mean, you almost look at the limbic system as being like this mental health shield, like a force field that's around us that protects us from all these other things. And Benzo breaks that shield down. And suddenly we're vulnerable. We're like Superman without his powers. We can be injured. And not only that, the sheer breaking down of the shield creates this sort of self-fueling injury, a, a Benzo-induced self-fueling injury. And that's a lot of what I've been talking about uh, that I, at first I thought that's what bend was, was a, a benzo do self-fueling in, injury, but it's not. That's not the way they're talking about it. And I've had some now at this point, because I've spoken to multiple people and I've had a little more time to digest some of the literature. That's not what they're talking about, essentially. In fact, one complicated uh, problem with this bend term is I've had multiple conversations and I've noticed differences in each of those conversations. Like not everybody's even saying the same things. There's a slight difference uh, difference in definitions and you know there, there's these little nuances there that are different that so I think the term while it points to something um, real I do think there is a, a a neurological dysfunction and I do I do agree that look what do we know about benzos what do we know about psych meds at this point I mean it's so arrogant to think that we've reached anything I mean this is a very early science in some ways we're playing God with this thing and we don't know all the nuances and and the delicate and, and uh, you know, we're starting to learn now that a lot of mental health resides in the gut. We're learning now that chemical, um, uh, chemical withdrawal or chemical imbalance isn't the entire picture of mental illness, right? So the models are starting to shift and this is great. So this is where I say I'm, I'm not against bend or that what it's pointing to in some regards. Um, I just think we're early out. I think there needs to be a lot of definitions. I think, um, and I think the people that are pushing this, uh, pushing this term, um, I think they need to really be held accountable f um, for the information they're sharing so that people don't get scared again. So that Ben doesn't become a new, uh, what I call the benzo boogeyman, like kindling, akathisia, folate, histamine, and a bunch of other things that I won't say because if you don't know about them, you don't need to know about them. You shouldn't know about them, right? Now, some people right now, boom, somebody just clicked a dislike. Now, Dave, you've got to educate them. Listen, you're really over. If, you, if that's how you feel, you, I'm telling you, you are overlooking a much more um, profound symptom and much more risk, uh, you know, a, a much more danger, a bigger danger coming off benzos, which is the power of suggestion and rumination. Like nothing in this you'll ever go through on earth, I don't think, will prime you for the power of suggestion or even a placebo effect or a self-fulfilling prophecy or the manifestation of much more severe self-induced mental illness that comes from, like I said, that sort of limbic system force, force field shield being broken down, right? If I tell you, I can make up something, 
I could just make up something and tell you that like it's true and you will start to have those symptoms and you will developing it will become real to you that's a fact like that's a fact and if we don't agree then hey we don't agree maybe I'm not for you maybe my channel's not for you Dr. Jen Dr. whoever you know let those guys are probably better for you and and you know God bless everyone um, I hope everybody gets relief you know but I can't you know the genie's out of the box as far as you know out of the bottle so to speak for me I can't undo what I've seen and learned and, and what I really feel uh, is true in this in this area um, you know dealing with benzoitrol and related illnesses so I've got to I've got to tell my truth I've got to I've got to be honest or I would be insincere or I would be a sellout so again you know I would caution people using this term bend I think it's an umbrella term that maybe amongst uh, the benzo community has a lot of application and makes sense, you know, as almost like a slang. But in the medical community, I don't know. I'm very reserved. And even amongst the, again, even amongst the, the benzo community, you shouldn't, you know, I, I think you guys need to be asking yourselves, how do you differentiate bend from B wind or bend from withdrawal or bend from side effects or bend from manifested conditions or bend from, um, you know, uh, paradoxical effect, things like that, you know. Um, I think that's, that's the tougher challenge right here. And, and so, like I said, I'm not against it fully. Uh, I'm not for it fully. I think, you know, I, I kind of understand where it's trying to point to and what, what the people that are pushing it, uh, at least in part or why they're doing it. Um, I don't agree with the changing of language just because it's tough to educate people. I don't think that's where we are. Um, and I do argue that being an umbrella term, we do a disservice because we, we separate the distinct features and other explanations that could lead to, you know, um, better understanding and a better uh, path toward recovery, right? So it's, it, that's the the dangers of just having an umbrella term, which takes me all the way back to the beginning of this conversation, which is when I got into this, all I saw was I have a brain injury, I can't heal. I have a brain injury, I can't heal. Bend is the new word for brain injury, essentially. And even in my my documents and my templates and my program that I share, I do talk about brain injury. So like I said, there's a lot of overlap in some of these ideas here, but I look at it as a very temporary brain injury, a chemically induced uh, neurological kind of, you know, byproduct of coming off benzos. And I think in that level, on that regard, me and, you know, the term bend I, I'm, I'm with, but again, it's all that byproduct. It's the, the breakdown of semantics um, and the implication of all that. Now, there are 15 right now, uh, I believe there are 15 FDA approved benzos today with over 30 million people being prescribed in the United States alone, right? And those numbers are old. I mean, now with pandemic, I, I saw numbers say it's as high as 50 to 70 million. Uh, and, and that's even illicit, you know, illegal drug use, people that are getting benzos on the market now. It's so easy to get these. I mean, many of my clients, when their doctors pulled their drugs, they went to online and found ways to get benzos. And that's dangerous. We don't even know how str are those things legit. Are they strong? Are they too strong? Are they, you know, there's no FDA approval. We don't even know where they're coming from, you know. Um, but so there's a lot more people on benzos, right? And 44% of users eventually become dependent. According to studies, 44% of users over a period of six months will become dependent on benzos. That's astounding, my friend. That's almost half, Right. So you're talking about, let's say, out of 30 million, that's a conservative number of right now, current benzo users. What is that? 12, 10 to 12, the 13 million are going to be uh, become dependent? Now let's pretend it's 1% of people that become dependent on benzos out of 30 million that are currently using, right? That's 1%. That's 43% less than what the stats show, what the evidence shows. Let's just go there, right? Let's just greatly downplay it. Uh, 1%. Of 30 million is 3 million people. Where are these 3 million people, guys? You see the forums. You see the groups. You see the videos. You see the coaches. You see all of this. I've got a couple thousand people in my YouTube channel. Some of them, the highest that I've seen, have maybe 10 or 12. Some of the groups are usually several hundred, a few hundred, to a few thousand to 10 to 12,000 maybe. And that's people over not just you know this we're talking about one percent of 30 million right now these are constantly changing with new people every year you're you're getting much more new people many more new people many more people coming off of it i mean these numbers would be growing and growing over the last 10 years you would expect to probably see you know 70 to 100 million people or maybe more than that right 
many, 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 many millions of people coming off and having severe dependence, which would end up in these groups, groups and forums and on disability. And you better believe it, we'd be seeing it and the government would be involved, right? So part of the problem with this thing is it's, it's so under the radar. And I'm saying all this to, to drive this home that, you know, if bend is a real thing, it's very, very rare, right? And it's very, very, very rare on top of severe or protracted benzo withdrawal, which is already extremely rare. You know, what I mean to point to is, although 44% of users may become dependent on benzos, it's only a very, very small percentage of those people that developed the, the protracted issues, the severe issues that we all have that brings us together if you're listening to this, right? Because the person that didn't have that they're not here listening to this. And I had family members that had taken benzos longer than me, came off it, no problem. Didn't even understand what I was going through. I didn't understand how they came off and didn't know what I was going through. I mean, we both were shocked. So, you know, the videos, the forums, the groups, all of this, we have to remember where are the outliers. This is not the, this is not a true representation of the whole. And, you know, the Benzo Information Coalition wants to change the language. They don't like the term dependence. They find it com confusing. They find it, uh, it hurts people's feelings because they're getting looked at like a dick addicts. Look, I don't care how you redefine all of this. There are going to be people that are ignorant on the outside. that are going to say, oh, you must be addicted. It just doesn't matter. I don't care if you use a, a whatever, invent any term you want. They're going to, they're, there's going to be idiots that are going to think that, right? But it's our job to to help <clears throat> bring a, bring about awareness, right? And so I'll conclude with this. You know, it all comes down to how do you think we should handle this challenge? Do we change the language, which then requires a, a even a, a greater deal of edu education, or do we simply continue to educate people on the differences between dependence and addiction? Do we continue to push back and educate doctors and, and help them differentiate things like withdrawal? side effects, paradoxical reactions, manifested conditions from something like a, a legit neurological dysfunction that has been created by benzos, right? And indeed, everything I just listed isn't a neurological dysfunction, right? Induced by benzos. Like, I mean, depending, I mean, again, we're playing a word game. It's semantics here. Uh, and semantics are tricky. And that's kind of the whole premise of this video. Semantics are tricky. You know, when do we use, what do we use, how do we use it? This is an open conversation. And I'm not a, a big authority that has any right to tell people one way or the other, right? I'm just someone that works in this community. I have an advanced degree in, in uh, psych clinical psychology. I've worked in here. I've been through it. I've recovered. I've got a pretty good sense of it. This is just where I'm coming from, guys. So like I said, don't kill the messenger. Um, I'm sure this video will be voted down. It'll be my least uh, respected video. I might lose subscribers. I'm going to see it in the comments. Um, and that's fine, guys. You know, like I've been fighting this fight for a long time and I've been met with a lot of resistance. I've, I've received almost death threats. I mean, I've received letters that, that went pages and pages that people emailed me telling me what a, a scumbag I was and I don't understand benzos. I'm a liar. I never went through it. You know, I don't understand this, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, and some of these people have come from bigger uh, authorities, you know, be they were friends or working with bigger coaches. And, and so there definitely is a schism out there happening in the Benzo community regarding a lot of this stuff. Um, that's a whole nother topic altogether. But, um, but anyway, well, you know, how do you feel guys? What do you think about Benzo induced neurological dysfunction versus Benzo withdrawal induced neurological dysfunction? How do we differentiate again, um, Benzo induced neurological dysfunction from Benzo severe withdrawal? in all of its manifestations, all of its wacky manifestations. And I looked at that list and there's probably a hundred symptoms listed there um, by the American Medical Association. And I would say there's probably another hundred that are not listed. So then does it become uh, a process of updating that list or do we just sweep it under the neurological dysfunction umbrella? Do, you know, um, is it benzo-induced neurological dysfunction or is it side effects? You know, what are side effects? That's a little bit different than a withdrawal symptom it's a little bit different than necess necessarily a paradoxical effect. It's a little bit different than a manifested conditions, i.e. agoraphobia, panic, health anxiety, somatic issues. Somatic issues alone, guys, can count for so much of what I think uh, people would mistake for bend. Uh, somatic issues, these, these acute manifestations of, of physiological, hardwired into that limbic, sy limbic system kind of reactions. 
and, and I'll say this too, again, and I want to bring this full circle. Why, why is Dave picking on Ben? I'm not trying to pick. I'm trying to evolve a conversation here, really. And some of my favorite people uh, in the Benzel community are with this Ben term and, and work in this area, right? So I do have respect for it. I'm not picking on anybody, I promise you. I just don't want people to believe that they can't heal. I don't want people coming with this predisposed, you know, hardwired notion that they are somehow have a severe brain injury. And some of these people, you know, my detractors will say, well, Dave, how do you know they don't? Well, I'll tell you this, guys, everybody I've ever worked with, when they worked hard, they got better. That's a fact. Everybody started to improve. And sometimes they improve and things get hard or they have a bump in the road and they leave and they try other things. Things often get worse and they come back to me and we get back to work and things start working. I mean, I've seen the, I've seen the math and the science enough times. Now, it's not, uh, that's not to say that some people, some people can't be severely injured by psychotropic medication. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I will fight probably the rest of my life to help try to change laws about this, to educate doctors. Um, I don't think benzos need to be off the market entirely, but I think there needs to be, uh, the, the protocols greatly need to be changed. Uh, there's no such thing as informed consent with benzos. In a perfect world, we'd all have a class action lawsuit and a million dollars coming to us, right? So there's a lot of work that be, needs to be done. Just hear me on that. I'm not a, a benzo sympathizer or something like that. <clears throat> I'm, I'm actually just trying to... Um, I'm trying to remove some of the fog, you know, and I'm trying to be a positive force and help people realize that we can recover from this thing that, and, and also, and this is the tricky part that, that there is a benzyl induced sort of self fueling mechanism to, to this injury, so to speak, to this whole process. And you can be five years off thinking that you're stuck in benzo withdrawal, sure of it, but really it's something else. And that's the, that's the fear that people will adopt the label and then use that to mask everything else. You know, I had a friend, for example, that drank alcohol, and she said, I drink alcohol because I have Asperger's. You know, she, I don't think she had Asperger's. <laughs> um, and nor would drinking alcohol be a, a somehow, you know, um, therapeutic response to treatment, right? But you see this a lot. I'm bipolar. I have this. I, we, we start to wear this, and it becomes almost like a defensive blanket to everything else. And, and, the the painful fact about this is don't you know benzos is already the most painful drug to withdraw it can it's horrific it's horrific it's excuse me horrific right I was gonna say horrendous horrendous and horrific it's both of those things but it's still we can recover and to recover the the process that we need to engage to recover you know the the recovery program so to speak is even more difficult right it it, it requires us to get out of our comfort zone and to to challenge fear and to separate things and to, to avoid the rumination, the addiction. And the, my friends, there's so much of this thing that is self-fueling. That's that really changes the way we look at this thing. It's, it's, it, it almost, it, it's like a mind trick that's being played on you. And I'm trying to help you guys see through the trick. So that way you can actually heal. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you agree with me, if you don't agree, agree with me, I'd love to have a conversation. We evolve some ideas on this thing. Something